blessings, beloved. Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. And no man comes to the Father but through me, saith the Lord. So, in this video, I'd just like to demonstrate. <laughs> Just like to demonstrate to you, I deviated something, and how often the people who are um, Christian and who belong to Jesus, who are his sheep, are persecuted by the world, hindered, and their development arrested, neglected. And spat out and I want to show you that um, it's difficult to see this angle I think but you might notice that the lip on this side of my face is and this nostril has started to fall downward just 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 a, just a little bit you might think that it, that it was natural even it was just an imperfection or a flaw in my face that naturally occurred because it can happen but I want you to, to see that if I lift up slightly this part of my face here and here it's actually very difficult in this light just a moment because the light's behind me Let's see if I can boost this light here See that light kind of flattens everything. So, if if you see, do you see the you see the crease here? Do you see the crease? It indicates that the you can see here. That's a better angle. You can see here that the cheekbone is more exposed here on this side. That this portion of flesh here is kind of hanging a little. It's kind of drooping somewhat. And here. You'll notice that the bones here are even slightly exposed too. It looks, it appears that they are kind of hanging down slightly. Notice? So, when that's all lifted up, see how that kind of corrects my face? See how things are balanced out? Somewhat. <laughs> well, I had an impact with a heavy object to this side here, to this part of my face. Even when I was a child, my head, I have a little scar just there, my head hit the radiator. Now I don't know if, you know, over the years, a weakness might become more apparent, you know, like a, a nerve weakness as a result of a, of a trauma to a nerve might become more apparent as you age. But um, I, I also received an impact to that portion of my face with a, with a heavy ob object. Now, the object was substantially heavy. <clears throat> like say about, I don't know, half a kilo or something. And it was thrown with quite an amount of force at my head and just missed my temple. It was, th it just hit me around kind of this area here. And I noticed after that, that my face appeared somewhat different. Although I had a lot more weight on my frame at that time, it would probably be ne less noticeable because your skin would be more taut. But I've noticed that that side of my face hangs down now somewhat. So you can notice it when I'm talking, this side of my face doesn't really, the side of my mouth doesn't really lift up as much as this side. You might also notice that I have a somewhat deviated septum. You can see here the line, the way the, the light catches, that it's more, you see that? It's more pronounced to the right. It's kind of bending somewhat to the right. Well, when I was younger, um, a guy, a young ch child decided he wanted to horse play with me. 
and uh, once somebody decides that well you're in the horseplay and I got a headbutt there's a thing about bones when you're a child they're still uh, they call green so you get things like green stick fracture or it's when the bone I think bends or when it when it bends because it's not kind of solid enough to break it's more kind of pliable well I do remember quite an impact and when I examine this part of the bone here I notice that there's a change in the in the bone structure I don't know if that's as a result of that headbutt but it was a, it was quite a headbutt and it chipped the top of my tooth as well so I've noticed since the object was thrown at my face there's been a deterioration in my voice as a singer and now you, you'll notice that when I you know naturally there's always one nostril that's more open than the other at any given moment they say because they drain uh, alternating well when I block this side of my nose it's difficult to see sorry for all the up close footage but you'll notice this nostril closes very quickly do you hear how nasal I am already just by closing that nostril I'm already quite nasal um, but by closing that nostril I become a lot more nasal and you can hear the blockage like it's very obstructed I don't know like percentages if I had to give it a percentage a guesstimate I'd say it's probably at 10-15 percent some air is passing but very little it's very restricted and you can see the nostril closing <laughs> now that's pretty bad like but what and that's a lot more freer see even when I close the nostril so this portion of my skull the, the draining system the lymphatic system the maxillary sinus and everything whatever's going on here could be as a result of many contributory factors there's also something that runs in the family um, my brother had it I think my grandfather had it where there's there's an, an issue with the sinus and it's chronic um, but so all of these things taken into account it has greatly affected my ability to sing so when I'm singing I'm pretty much using one nostril and even at that because of my chronic sinusitis I may be I don't know 40% function in one nostril and 15 in the other so I've learned to live with that and for a large portion of uh, singing career if you'd call it that um, I was struggling to breathe normally so the way I sang had to be changed I had to alter how I phonated how I distributed uh, airflow and things and how I use the muscles to support that so the way I sing is quite peculiar because of my condition um, and so it, I'd struggle to access the higher range without increasing volume somewhat and there were certain things that had to occur just to reach notes and sustain notes and, and even now like for a period of time in the morning my sinus is clearing 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 it's like it's catching up so I don't know if you're familiar with the lymphatic system but the lymphatic system is like the sewage system of the blood it removes impurities from the blood I think excess fat as well so if your sinus isn't working properly I mean I've been to specialists 
I've been to doctors. Most recently was with Dr. Paul Curran in the Fife Medical Center. I think it's medical. Does he call it the Fife Medical Center? I don't want to mix up two places, but it's, um, Dr. Paul Curran anyway in the Fife. He's in like a little townhouse along the way there. And like a little terrace house there in the fight. So um, he noticed it. He said, just by looking at me, yeah, I'll refer you. And I've been to specialists, Dr. Bangalore Mahesh. Um, and he was based in Waterford. I think it's called the Heath can't be sure now on that but something like, like that and um, he diagnosed um, that there were physiological changes in my sinuses <laughs> um, which is quite vague again um, and I've been to uh, allergy specialists who have told me I've, I have allergies um, allergic to like dog dander cats uh, grass you see the thing is when when you've got a compromised airflow because the sinus requires airflow in order to maintain proper distribution of bacteria and um, you know the proper microbiome because that's required it's another word for it is aeration it has a cooling effect it, it allows air in to, to dry to a certain extent your sinus um, and so all that function needs to occur to avoid stagnation so I've noticed that I'm getting uh, a frequency of periodontal infection on this side underneath that problematic sinus just there and you see things are all interconnected so you've got the lymphatic system which drains downwards and if you've got blockages there in your lymphatic system it could cause a stagnation um, or myelitis it could cause it could eventually you know over time these things tend to progress and get worse rather than better or stay the same and if they're untreated now uh, treating things with antibiotics and anti-inflammatories doesn't co doesn't solve the root problem and actually there can be a spring back effect from using anti-inflammatories so you'll you'll have a period of relief and then if you keep using them things will spring back even worse and the anti-inflammatory won't work anymore anyway so what have you gained um, maybe a week of breathing better or however long it takes for the spring back to occur but so I've noticed this is something I've had to live with um, it's a handicap um, it's a physiological limitation it's it uh, diminishes to some extent my quality of life my ability to breathe the air which is the first and, f and most important nutrient that we have in our bodies like if you think about it if you were to not breathe for two minutes or three minutes you'd die if you were to not drink water uh, for three weeks you might die uh, depending on how many fat stores you have because your body can convert fat to water if you didn't eat food for maybe um, 40 days you'd begin to starve if you had been eating food normally up to up to that point and that again depends on how much fat you have in storage and um, I think one man was recorded of living 365 days without eating uh, food because he was so overweight so um, air is our most important um, nutrient it is a nutrient and um, it's a life sustaining nutrient um, and um, when your ability to breathe is has been restricted and um, limited and um, that can affect cellular chemistry it can affect cellular chemistry to some extent and it can encourage mouth breathing and this is something I've had had to overcome I went through a period where I was mouth breathing I was snoring I had sleep apnea 
which can be a rather alarming condition and can be life-threatening where when you're sleeping your jaw slings open because you've gotten into that habit of mouth breathing your jaw slings open and then because your jaw opens your tongue collapses you might notice that when you if you open your jaw and let it go slack right now your tongue will also relax along with it well that's fine when you're vertical but when you're horizontal that means your tongue will collapse onto your esophagus and pinch it because your tongue's quite heavy it's a muscle so it'll, it'll pinch it and so this if your tongue will be sitting there for a while you're not breathing and eventually the brain will wake you up or you might be snoring and then suddenly you stop breathing and the brain will wake you up and whoa, you get this adrenaline wake up <laughs> and it affects you because you're not really sleeping well you're not you're not properly you're not breathing properly throughout the night so what I actually eventually learned to do was tape my mouth using uh, firm medical grade tape Tape it closed, I had to shave, tape it closed, and it trained me not to allow my jaw to sling open, and I learned to breathe through my nose. When we when we breathe sharply through our mouth our mouth, we get a an adrenaline charge. We get a release of adrenaline. Like if somebody gets a fright, what's the first thing they do? They gasp through their mouth. They don't go, you scared me, do they? So what they're doing is they're releasing adrenaline. Um, and this gives them the fight or flight. Gives them that instant of, what am I gonna do? And then they, they fight or flight or throw a startle effect thing and run a dummy and run um, so the limitation that a restricted breathing can place on your life let alone as a singer I mean it's just career ending as a singer and it, it really was exacerbated when that hard object uh, it was like the, the straw that broke the camel's back when that hard object hit my face and you see the skin of my face because that's where it imp impacted so it makes sense that if that's the point where it impacted if I lift it up at that point that my face is corrected see see how that works kind of looks more even on both sides now isn't it well when I let that go see how that side of my face seems to droop see that it's it's small it's a small difference but it could be significant and is significant in uh, causing a difference with the function of that area there because it's an uncharacteristic um, posture of the face you see and so if this portion is collapsing then so my ability to breathe through there also see how much better that's improved when I pull that portion of my face away that portion of collapsed skin watch even when I block it up again it seems to be somewhat improved and then that yes that's not fun so it's it's something that's been diagnosed but neglected and that's the point it's been diagnosed 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 some more and then I present before the doctor and he's sending me to a specialist again you know you're kind of like okay I get the message I get the point you don't want to help me so we as Christians we're going to go through this because the world rejects us no you're not getting on the bus but 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 no call the police 
but you let me on the other day. No conversation. Shut down. <laughs> but I've told you I have reason not to wear a mask. I told your colleagues when they let me on the bus. I told them that I'm, I have a reason not to wear a mask. Oh, you told them. No conversation. No more conversation on that lead. Not going down that road with you. Just call the police. No, 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 no. And then the police tell you you're engaging in threatening behaviour. Sure, didn't even get on the bus. Why are they sending me fines and summonsing, trying to summons me to court if I didn't even go on the bus journey? I wasn't allowed on the bus. I was allowed on the bus, on a bus journey, then I wasn't allowed on the bus. So I didn't go on the bus. It wasn't like I tried to force my way onto the bus and not wear a mask. I stood there to have a reasonable conversation and they, which, which wasn't had. And there's video evidence of this. But they want to fine you and summons you to court. So that's the type of persecution that Christians get. That this Christian got. Why? Get out of town. Right, I'll get the bus. Right, go somewhere else. You don't want me preaching here. I'll go somewhere else and preach. You're not allowed on the bus. But you let me on the bus. And now you're saying I can't go on the bus. Right, so I won't go on the bus. Right, so we'll summons you to court. Just, just go and die, like. So, the reason I'm making this video is because the enemy would try to make you think that this type of stuff doesn't even happen in society. That that's not what's blatantly happening. No, that's not happening. You can be Christian. It's just this Christian we don't like. No, no, it's a true Christian we don't like. The fake Christians find the ones that twerk in church. Them, them the world will, uh, will allow. But the true Christian who's speaking from the Bible and pointing out the evil that's going on in the nation. Oh no, you're not even allowed on the bus. See what's written on the side of the bus? That doesn't even apply to you unless you have difficulty wearing a mask. That doesn't even apply to you. We still have it posted on our buses, but it doesn't apply to you. No, no, not you. Not you. You don't get the same treatment that people who are in the world get. You don't get the same care and attention that those in the world get. But the enemy wants to hide this. He, he wants to just say, no, these are just loose cannons. These people are just, whew, they're off the wall, these people. Who wants to, I mean, who wants to breathe? Who wants to be able to breathe? It's just totally unreasonable. That's threatening behavior. So, I have to be extra careful with my dental hygiene along this area. I, every time I eat, like, uh, or I'm trying to, every time I eat, I get dental floss and be very careful. And I use baking soda because baking, so baking soda is alkalizing. I don't recommend that you swallow it because it might uh, lower the acidity of your gut and that could cause acid reflux. Um, but I use it to alkalize to reduce the acid in my mouth you know? because the bacteria that live off of sugar 
um, their waste matter is acidic so that will alkalize that and its negative effects so um, a little bit of baking soda it's also slightly abrasive so it'll remove some of the staining on your teeth and over time a little bit more a little bit more a little bit more I suppose you depending on how stained your teeth are you might reach a point of diminishing returns but certainly worth doing clean them up a bit clean up your choppers um, so yeah it's clear there's clearly a problem there you know and I notice that when I'm when I do sing even at low volume I tend to direct the air over to the right side where it can more freely flow because you know they've they've looked in my sinus I've, I've had MRI scans um, yeah so they said there's like that's the thing they've said there's physiological changes there but they but after that there was no follow up just taking out the inflammatory <laughs> like you know so that's that's the reality that's the handicap of it um yeah so it like so people say no 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 it's cuz you didn't go private you went public now i don't know how differently you're treated when you go privately it might expedite your treatment um, vastly but I've, I've gone private like I paid on a number of times a number of occasions sorry um, I paid for uh, to go private and the diagnosis were the same you've chronic sinusitis um, eventually they told me I had physiological changes in there and a, a, a deviated septum yeah a deviated septum and um, these are things that can be corrected like like fighters will get it done you know yeah. there's a surgery called balloon sinuplasty where they put up a, a balloon through a catheter up into the space there that enters into the maxillary sinus and they call it the inflated balloon a very strong balloon like a rubber composite or something it's made out of um, and it goes in there and they inflate it to the point where it just makes little micro fracture, fractures little micro breaks in the bone to increase the space but that will show you the importance of aeration if they're going in widening the gap in there so it's never a good idea uh, to cover up for extended periods of time because it can cause stagnation because bacteria grows so quickly like every 15 minutes it's it's doubling like our huge numbers of multiplication and so you're, the, the less aeration you have, the more disruption to your microbiome, the more probability there is that you're going to become ill. Because your sinus is your first port of call with, um, is your first line of defense against whatever comes in through the air. That's why you have hairs in your nose, to catch things. It's like a filter, system of filtration. And then you have the microbiome of the sinus, which is set up uh, to uh, kill uh, and protect and uh, things that from things that shouldn't be in there. There's a microbiome there. It's part of the immune system. So the body is far more complex than they actually know, or I know, but we know topically. The functions for these things but it's not in it's rarely spoken about in the mainstream if at all you have to be searching like niche videos and YouTube and things like that you have to kind of already have the 
what to enter into the search bar to kind of find this stuff. The microbiome of the sinus or um, you know like in the mouth it's the tonsils that is your first port of uh, protection and then in in the nose it's 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 the microbiome of the sinus the, the bacterial distributions um, and the and part of that design is the the aerating nature of just breathing through your nose in the first place it co it's cooling because bacteria needs a moist warm environment to grow when you cover your face you're creating that so undesirable bacteria that is so undesirable bacteria needs a warm moist environment to grow that's why things uh, die out in the sun when they don't have a, a moist environment. That's why bacteria can't uh, exist very long on the surface. So, that's the, um, That's the reason for not wearing a mask, the physiological, anatomical, scientific reason for not wearing a mask. And um, these are these are subtopics I've studied in some detail, um, because of the way I've suffered. You know, it's like when when you when something happens to you, you become more aware of it. It's highlighted to you, and you might go off and research it, and then you you find something, and then you search something else. You know how Google works? It's kind of like the tree, and they branch out, and you get another kernel of information, and you put that into search, and then that brings you off somewhere else, and and such and such. And so, um, I encourage you to understand your body when it comes to. Uh, diet and, 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 and health and how this your own system works to defend you against uh, back, the disruption of bacteria because that's what's bad the ba what's bad is the disruption of the microbiome or the microbiota that's what's that's the problem bacteria in and of itself isn't the problem it's the disruption of the proper balance of bacteria that's the problem And so a physiological deviation, or a mechanical, if you like, if you want to use a different word, deviation, or um, damage to the shape of things and the way they should sit and fit, and can cause a problem with that uh, distribution of bacteria. It can cause a problem with the aeration, which is another factor part of the perfect design of breathing that contributes to maintaining the proper distribution of bacteria within the nasal microbiome what is the nasal microbiome the microbiome of the upper respiratory tract in health The human upper respiratory tract, URT, sorry, BMC biology. The human upper respiratory tract offers a variety of niches for micro microbial colonization. Local microbial co communities are shaped by the different characteristics of the specific location within the URT or the upper respiratory tract, but also by the interaction with both external and intrinsic factors such as aging, diseases, immune responses, olfactory function. What is olfactory function? Just a second before we skip that. Sense of smell. So olfactory function is the industry specific terminology. Where was it? 
and lifestyle habits such as smoking. We summarize here the current knowledge about the URT microbiome in health and disease, discuss methodological excuse me, issues and consider the potential of the nasal microbiome to be used for medical diagnostics and as a target for therapy. Wow. So it's so, so of so, such importance that you maintain the proper distribution of, uh, the, of bacteria in the microbiome that it's even a target for therapy. Since a healthy adult breathes more than 7,000 litres of air a day, so you see here we're speaking of litres of air, so air is a fluid, so there must be sufficient fluidity for the air to actually enter the lungs in order to get that degree of flow every day. So what happens if you diminish the amount of flow that's entering into, the, into your respiratory system? So like, the, like a hose pipe, if there's a kink in the hose pipe, no, the water comes out under greater pressure. It might go in under greater pressure if there was sufficient suction to do so, but if it wasn't, like, you see, what you have to understand how breathing in works. It doesn't work in the same way as breathing out. Right? Breathing in is like simply opening a bag. When you open a bag, air automatically goes in. Okay? But if you now only have half of the bag open, Remember, when we breathe, we breathe for a period of time. So you breathe in, breathe out, and we get into a rhythm. If that rhythm becomes more shallow, you're only opening the bag a little bit. Right? So the diaphragm works in the reverse way you might think it works. You breathe in, the diaphragm moves down to allow the bag to open. And then you might imagine that, like kind of like a bagpipe, it needs to close for the air to come out of it, so. Right? But in order to open, your man just slings up his arm. And the, the air automatically goes back in. Right? So, all, that's happen, all that needs to happen for air to enter into a, a plastic bag is you need to open it fully, right? You just flick it open. The air's already in it. You, you squeeze that bag and the air goes out of it. So if you only have now half of the inlet open, well then the rate at which the air is entering in has been reduced, but you're still breathing in for the same period of time or even more shallowly when you veil your face, when you cover your face. So since a healthy adult breathes more than 7,000 liters of air a day, the upper respiratory tract, URT, is constantly bathed in airflow for the, for, from the external environment. So now, we're, when we see air as a nutrient, if you're getting less of that nutrient of, across the course of the day, you're not going to be able to get a full picture of how that's affecting you physi physiologically on a cellular level or your overall physiological function by sitting down with a machine that measures your, your blood oxygen level for a short period of time. Because air is a nutrient, it is a vital nutrient that we require constantly. Now you can deny the body of a certain amount of air for a certain amount of time as a matter of emergency or if you've no other choice in the matter. But if you've a choice in the matter, it's not advisable. Since a healthy adult breathes more than 7,000, and you do have a choice in the matter, to purport otherwise is fallacious. Since a healthy adult breathes more than 7,000 litres of air a day, healthy adult note, the upper respiratory tract, so that, the, like, the vulnerable are not the ones then that you need to veil the most because they're the ones who are, are less likely to be breathing 7,000 litres of air a day already. Along with the air at 10.4 to 10.6 bacterial cells per cubic metres of air are inhaled per day. So bacterial cells are normally inhaled. 
and people don't drop dead. It's a normal, bacteria is a normal part of life where there are more bacterial cells in your body than there are actual human cells. Did you know that? Because they're involved in the function and upkeep of the body. Besides these bi biological par particulates, the URT is exposed to atmospheric, physical and chemical parameters including varying humidity, you see? Oxygen, immunology factors. So immunology would be talking about the distribution of the microbiome throughout the body and how healthy and well balanced that is. Now over time, immune cells can become defective, but there is a way of resetting your immune system and that's why the, one of the reasons the Bible advises us to fast, because when you fast for 72 hours, um, which isn't advisable to completely fast as a type 1 diabetic, when, when you completely fast for 72 hours, and I've done it, I've done it up to 14 days. I had little bits of honey and lemon. Um, I was advised to do that in, in the event of a headache. Um, it gives you a little bit of sugar and keeps you going and you tap then into eventually you tap into your uh, fat stores you go into uh, um, a ketogenic state and you, you enter into ketosis where you're now breaking down fat cells and using them for energy along with the anatomy these factors shape specific micro environments in the upper re respiratory tract such as the nasal cavity sinuses nasopharynx and oropharynx as a consequence or as a knock-on effect as a result specific micro environments tiny places with little things in the urt upper respiratory tract harbor host hold contain different microbial communities entire communities that what are communities well, there ver there's a variety there and diversity. So a community is a diverse collection. Harbor different microbial communities composed of variable proportions of resident and transient microorganisms. Like other human body sites, the upper respiratory tract is colonized by a variety of different microbial species directly after birth. Wow. See how, how God's hand is perfect see how complex human life is that only an infinite unlimited god could sustain it are you, does this give you a sense of who you are that you're an image bearer of the living god and he's offering you life <laughs> later on this first microbial community transforms into the adult urt microbiome the upper respiratory tract becoming less dense and more diverse in the elderly the distinct microbiomes of specific micro environments become more similar so they they as people grow older they kind of have like a, a signature microbiome the changes that happen tend to be common throughout the elderly community Many studies report that the nasal microbiome of healthy humans is primarily composed of Fila actinobacteria, bacteroidets, <laughs> firmicutes, and proteobacteria. So that's protein based bacteria with representatives of genera uh, Bifidobacterium, Corinbacterium. Staphylococcus, Streptococcus, Dolisogranulum, and Moraxella predominating. However, most research focuses on the bacteria in the human nasal cavity, while other components of the microbiome, such as viruses, archaea, and fungi, fungi is difficult. If you get a fungal infection, that can be difficult to deal with without uh, intervention in terms of like actually going in and removing fungal mass and things like that are seldom specifically addressed and thus likely overlooked you see that you see that now 
So you have clinics that are set up in various different places that know this stuff, but it's not given to the mainstream because these would be specialist clinics. And the greater the population, the more likely there are more specialist clinics because there are more people going into more uh, specialized areas after they study. Therefore, these clinics will tend to crop up more often. So that's a limitation with Ireland. A small Ireland, it's easy. It's easier for a smaller group of people to monopolize con and control and be authoritarian over the smaller population. And I think that's why you notice like this, I thought people in Ireland are so used to being whipped and, and browbeaten by the church, the Catholic church that is, that um, they just tend to go along with things. And so you're seeing much more compliance for a longer period of time. And so those who are clearly misleading us are pushing the boat out that bit longer because they're getting away with it, right? Because they're getting away with it, simple as that. Whereas when you look at other countries, they're already going to football matches. They've said, enough of that. They're filling stadiums. Currently, several different therapies are suggested for the treatment of inflammatory URTIs. So that would be upper respiratory tract um, infections. They do happen. It's when the microbiome is disrupted significantly, such that a d undesirable bacteria has... Um, propagated and disrupted the uh, has overwhelmed the body's ability or the rate at which these um, harmful bacteria are normally kept at bay so that might that is usually seasonal because of the humidity factor so humidity increases at different stages of the year due to the seasonality due to the environmental characteristics of the season and what's brought by that to the, the sinus. Um, functional or compositional perturbations of the microbiome can occur at different body sites and this dysbiosis, disruption, this imbalance has been linked with various uh, diseases. For example, inflammatory bowel disease and met metabolic disorders have been linked to dysbiosis in the microbiome of the gastrointestinal tract. That's your gut and URT infections, upper respiratory tract infections. So there's a relationship you see with the gut and the sinus. There's a relationship and a communication and, and there's a good brain uh, uh, link relationship. And so, of course, the body is constantly communicating and trying to rebalance and adapt and defend. And so it requires, aeration plays a big part in the upper respiratory tract, proper aeration. And they should know this if they don't. For example, inflammatory bowel disease and metabolic disorders have been linked to dysbiosis in the microbiome of the gastrointestinal tract and URT infections. URTI such as chronic rhinocytinusitis. Phew. Chronic, meaning extended over a long period of time. It's gone on for ages, <laughs> as a fellow might say. Chronic rhino, rhino sinusitis. Itis, inflammation, sinew of the sinus with rhinoceros, rhinosinusitis, an inflammation of the sinus, the nasal sinus. With dysbiosis in the URT, these dysbioses are often characterized by a loss of beneficial, are you listening now? A loss of beneficial commensal bacteria which protect against overgrowth of opportunistic pathogenic bacteria. So the wearing of the mask creates the environment for the undesirable bacteria to overwhelm the desirable one. And then who do you go to? Mr. Pharmacy. Oh, we need you. We need you. No, what you need is to breathe properly and it'll settle down in a few weeks. It'll, the balance, the bacterial balance will come back. You do a nasal rinse, use some salt. It'll kill the bad guys. Do a, do a sinus, do a nasal rinse and when you're finished, 
blow out all the water make sure you blow it out really well because you don't want to put more moisture in there unnecessarily blow 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 but do it gently so that you don't irritate or inflame the lining which is quite gentle in there of the sinus blow it out use a netty pot or a squeezy bottle that you get in Tesco put a bit of salt in it and it'll push some water into your sinus it'll come out the other nost nostril don't swallow it right that's a nasal rinse okay these dysbioses are often characterized by a loss of beneficial commensal bacteria what are commensal bacteria Commensal bacteria act on the host's immune system to induce protective responses that prevent colonization and invasion by pathogens. So what is this vital part of nasal or upper respiratory tract health? It is proper aeration of the sinus. You're speaking of somebody that has been suffering with sinus problems for a long, long time and has had the the proper flow of air or the normal function of air impeded significantly and my body still largely prevents infection because I because I've learned to nose breathe rather than mouth breathe right However, unless you have proper aeration, those undesirable bacteria will propagate. Now put one of those silly masks on an old person. And do you think they're going to stay healthy wearing them? Those poor old people that change your nappies. Like, human health has been described as the outcome of the complex interaction between the microbiome and its human host. That's a huge statement. Human health has been described as the outcome, it's the result of the complex interaction between the microbiome and its human host. It is very complex. It's complex beyond a full and total holistic comprehension of the human mind. Human health has been described as the outcome of the complex interaction between the microbiome and its human host. But we can, we can um, understand topically. You know, um, I think it was Einstein said, it's like human beings are like uh, when we look to the systems of God, when we look to the creation or to the universe, when, when we look to around, the things around us, we see them and we can understand them, but we're like a small child going into a library of books. And all these books are in different languages. And we look at them and we can understand that they appear to have a system to them. They, it appears to be a language of sorts. Wow. We have that degree of understanding. It's because we know a language, we can appreciate how languages look. Like genetics is a language. It is the, the language of, of life. It's like, it's like letters and words and sentences and they're linked together to, to compose you. <laughs> and so we can appreciate to some degree our genetics, but other things in the universe um, like even the smaller systems of the body that the, they're so small and so complex that we're just like okay that's beyond us we still know there's a language in them but we can understand because of uh, trial and error you know do this and then that negative effect um, we can see observe is the word we should understand anyway because of faith in our creator but we observe is a better word um, the negative effects of transgressing away from the way we're supposed to use things 
So you see that if you don't use your sinus, have you ever heard of use it or lose it? Well, that applies. So if you're not going to properly use your sinus and breathe properly, you're going to lose the normal function of it. Human health has been described as the outcome of the complex interaction between the microbiome and its human host. Functional or compositional perturbations of the microbiome. Perturb is to uh, stifle, hinder. Com compositional perturbations of the microbiome can occur at different body sites, all throughout the body, and this dysbiosis, this disruption imbalance, has been linked with various diseases. Has been it's it's the cause of them. Um, to dysbiosis in the microbiome, sorry, linked to various diseases. For example, inflammatory bowel disease and metabolic disorders have been linked to dysbiosis in the microbiome of the gastrointestinal tract and URT infections, uh, or URTI, such as chronic rhinosinusitis. Yeah, no, it's no fun. I like to sing. I can't do that anymore. I can go. Da, 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 da. That's about it. With dysbiosis in the URT, these dysbioses are often characterized by a loss of beneficial commensal bacteria. It's kind of it's kind of a head voice falsetto thing I have to kind of hang around in when I'm singing along to my songs. These dysbioses are often characterized by a loss of beneficial commensal bacteria which protect against overgrowth of opportunistic pathogenic bacteria 16, 19, 20. I don't know what that is. <laughs> That's like a reference. Maybe a link to another thing. Oh yeah, 6, 19, 20. So Copeland E, Leonard K. These are references for this. They're saying, we're not just making this stuff up. We haven't just found it under a rock. We're not licking it up off a stone. 6, Copeland E. Leonard K, Carney Orr, Kong J, Forer M, Nado Y. These are men learned, studied in these areas. Dominguez, 19, let's click 19. Who are we talking about? Peterson C, Round JL, micro review defining dysbiosis and its on host immunity and disease cell microbial 2014, 16, 20, 24 to 33. Are we just going to ignore all these brilliant men? And favor cuddly toy uh, viruses on TV with skeletons in the corner and white jackets and kind of condescending <laughs> tones. Or are we going to look to science and scientists who've spent a lot of time studying these areas and specialize in them? And not just who they kind of, you know, come on in, Mr. This, come on in, Mr. That, join the party. Today we have cuddly toy viruses. Currently, several different therapies are suggested for the treatment of inflammatory URTIs. Antibiotics as well as intranasal corticosteroids are used, combining antimicrobial and anti-inflammatory properties, 2124. The only problem with the anti-inflammatory things is they tend to contain chemicals that are disruptive to the gut. So it's kind of contra counterintuitive, it's, 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 it's counterproductive. These treatments cause a loss of microbial my nose is grand, but now my stomach's guntered. You know what I mean? These treatments cause a loss of microbial diversity, potentially leading to an increase of gram-negative bacteria in the nose. Do you see that? These treatments cause a loss of microbial diversity. So they, they reduce the general health, your general health. Because remember, human health has been described as the outcome of the complex interaction between the microbiome and its human host. So these treatments cause a loss of human health, potentially leading to an increase of gram-negative bacteria in the nose. So we have to put a stop to this. In the case of chronic rhinositis, rhinosinusitis, sinus surgery, aiming at improving drainage of the mucus, so there, that's mechanical function, combined with different antibiotics, is the most common treatment. Although this type of therapy is highly invasive, its outcomes are usually satisfactory. They are because they increase drainage. So you're moving fluid away from the site, which allows it to dry out for the stagnated pockets of mucus to be removed. Of course, that's gonna make a difference. Do you know? That's why they say dry the countertop when you're finished. 
when we're when you're in culinary school not just like put a whole load of this on it and wet it and then go about like no because that's the bacteria is going to love that before the end of your shift you'll have bacteria all over that surface now you have to dry it well drying it well is far more important than using any chemicals if it's bone dry nothing can grow on it in the case of chronic runny sinusitis, sinus surgery aiming at improving drainage of the mucus combined with different antibiotics is the most common treatment, although this type of therapy is highly invasive. Its outcomes are usually satisfactory. However, airway diseases might also be prevented and treated with less aggressive therapies, such as saline rinses, which I described to you, cleaning the nasal mucosa from inflammatory mediators and other pollutants. What's an inflammatory mediator? An inflammatory mediator is a messenger that acts on blood vessels and or cells to promote an inflammatory response. So it communicates a need for inflammation. It, it, a mediator is something that goes between. Okay, so it's going between to communicate to a site to produce inflammation. And what does inflammation do? Inflammation brings more blood flow. More blood flow brings more oxygen, more nutrients. And, and, and an immune, that's an immune response, white cells perhaps. Inflammatory mediators that contribute to neoplasia include prostaglandins, that's the name of them, inflammatory uh, cytokines such as, and then their numbers, their representative numbers. And you'd have to do the course then to know that stuff. Chemokines chemokines such as little diddly alpha what are the mediators of inflammation the major cell types that produce mediators of acute inflammation are platelets okay so that's see that's what happens when you're on google you read the next thing you're off on a tangent in the case of chronic runny sinusitis sinus surgery aiming at improving drainage so they say that 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 can work like if if there is a, a, a physiological or a mechanical problem in there, if they go in and rectify it then and promote drainage, well then it's gonna, it's gonna improve things. It's gonna fix it. But that's a mechanical problem, so to speak, rather than a smaller um, problem in a micro environment. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a physiological, mechanical, maybe of, of the bone structure or of, you know what I mean, of a soft tissue structure, rather than, um, the, the, the micro diversity of a micro environment causing the the disruption in health or the, the excuse me the disruption in function but in the mechanical or physiological uh, problem or uh, misshapenness can cause the um, micro environments to become disrupted and to lose diversity also comparative your team why because um if the if there's a disruption to the proper airflow or the proper removal of fluids well then we have stagnation both ways because of the still fluids they're just staying still they're not being moved away as they normally should be and they're staying there too long and they'll stagnate or um Airflow is not going through to dry things out and that can also cause a stagnation because the environment is too humid. Remember what it said at the start of this? I don't want to delve too deeply into this, but I think I've made the point. The aim of this review is to summarize the current information about the microbiome in the upper respiratory tract, discuss methodological issues such as sampling methods and sites, present the link between upper respiratory tract, microbiome composition, immune system. That, that what we've learned from this is that's the same thing your microbiome composition and your immune system are the same thing they're one in the same now the immune system is an encompassing term and that's why they're both used in the sentence with commas in between because the immune system involves more than just the microbiome composition but they are actually the same thing 
and certain diseases have a look at the influence of common therapies on the URT microbiome and identify the current gaps in our knowledge. See, there are gaps in our knowledge. We must admit that. There's no scientist that knows it all. But these are basic fundamental things that scientists should know. Details of cited studies including sampling sample, processing protocols, studied population and sites, and results are summarised in additional file one. Now, this is the type of stuff I, I was trying to preach to a lesser extent. There are studies online, all you have to do is check. This is the BMC uh, Biology, it's biomedcentral.com, you can check there. And this is just one site that I found by inputting into Google. I put in nasal microbiome. The microbiome of the nose, a, com a comprehensive review of the nasal microbiome, diversity of nasal microbiota and its interaction with etc etc. There's loads here to learn about the nasal microbiome and how um, humidity, an increase in humidity, humidity can compromise human health. An increase in Humidity in the nasal cavities, the pharyngeal cavities, the sinuses, the maxillary sinus. You've got sinus over your eyes and everything. Here, if you had a little infection there, you might feel lightheaded and ah, you could feel uh, woozy and stuff. Oh, COVID, is it COVID? Come on, folks. Blessings, I love you dearly. All I seek to do is bring you the truth. In Jesus' mighty name, we will expose the unfruitful works of darkness by telling the truth. That's all we're required to do. Not get in a to and fro argument with anybody. We just bring the truth and those who will hear it and accept it will um, act accordingly and properly having received that information. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. I love you dearly. Blessings. Have a lovely day. It's a sunny one. Glory to the Lamb of God who's seated at the right hand of the Father on high in the heaven of heavens. Jesus Christ the righteous.